Welcome back to 2K Way Podcast. I'm Peyton. This is Paige. Uh, we're sisters 2,000 miles away from one another, and we discuss murder in the macabre. So this week was supposed to be my episode, but I've had a little bit of a rough week with my wisdom teeth being taken out. I got them taken out last Tuesday. I got a dry socket three days later, and then I have now I have a really bad ear infection. With double all of ear it. infection. Yeah, double ear infection, and my face is still super swollen. So, <laughs> we I will not be using this video. So, what will we be covering, Paige? Uh, today, we are going to be talking about the murders of the DuPont de Ligonese family. And I think I said that right. That's how I'm going to be pronouncing it throughout this whole episode. So, hopefully, hey, our French listener, if I say anything wrong... hey. hey. <laughs> Yeah, please contact, let me know. Contact us on our socials, and we will be more than happy. Well, actually, we'll be so freaking excited to hear from you. Um, yeah, because mm-hmm. that's so exciting that we have at least one person in in the suburb of Paris. It looks like. Yeah, <laughs> and hello now to Ireland. Woo! That's so, so exciting. <laughs> So if I sound really unenthused, it's because my mouth still hurts and it hurts to smile. So I'm sorry that I'm not my normal ha-ha self. Yeah. Well, and again, I apologize if I say any of these words wrong. I am trying so hard. And I did actually look up the pronunciation, like the Google pronunciation of these words <laughs> yeah because we want to do you right french listener <laughs> we so do and i did not take french in high school so no me neither so i really can't help either nope so but i saw a i guess it's not a documentary um netflix on- is yeah unsolved netflix mysteries. is new unsolved mysteries is where i first saw this and I just was baffled by this whole thing. And it's just crazy. So I, I knew I had to do an episode on this because it's, it's just nuts. So I'm going to be talking about the murders of the DuPont de Ligonese, Ligonese family. Again, I apologize if I butcher some of this, these words. We're trying to do you white France li- French listener. France listener. <laughs> France. That was such an American way to the France listener. Shut up. <laughs> All right. So it starts with uh, Xavier Pierre Marie Dupont de Ligonnès was born on January 9th, 1961, to Count Bernard Hubert Hubert Dupont de Ligonnès and Genevieve Maitre in Versailles. I think I said that right. In Versailles. In Versailles, yeah. So he was a descendant of the old French nobility. Xavier was raised in a very strict upper class Catholic society. It was very very strict on on what they did so when he was 10 years old his father actually left him in the care of his grandmother so his father kind of wanted to get out of that you know high society kind of feel and um oh what am i trying to say community god his father was trying to get out of that really strict catholic community Not that he was trying to get out of the Catholic way. He just, that community. Okay, so he didn't necessarily want to get out of the high society life. He just wanted to get out of the strict Catholic life. Or both. Yes and no. It. He was still very much a Catholic man. He just, that kind of community and that high, you know, um, Catholic society, he was just trying to kind of distances himself from okay so what year uh, is this this was 1971 because it said when xavier was 10 years old is when his father left him to the care of his grandmother okay so when he was 20 he met agnes so there's not much more about his early years he was basically just raised in this upper class class catholic society okay so when Xavier was 20 years old, is that's when he met Agnes. Agnes Hodanger was born on November 9th, 1962 in neuilly sur in the suburbs of Paris. Paris, I apologize. They fell in love, but Xavier wasn't ready to settle down yet, so he left 
to kind of go travel. It's kind of what his dream was. He he just wanted to travel pretty much. I so when he eventually came home, he found that Agnes had gotten pregnant by another man. But they decided to become a family, defying all of their beliefs when it comes to the Catholic, the high society of Catholic life and their aristocrat- aristocratic life. Xavier married Agnes and he adopted her son. Ooh. His name is Arthur. So they spent the 90s traveling around France. In 1993, their first son, Thomas, was born. In 95, hey. Anne was born. And in 98, their fourth and final child, Benoit, was born. So during the 90s is really when they were traveling the most. And that's when all of their children were born. So in the early 2000s, they actually tried and failed to immigrate to Florida. And honestly, I'm kind of thinking that this is when their marital problems had started because they lost quite a bit of money in that attempt. But they ended up finally settling down in Nantes as early, uh, I believe, like 2000. 1 2002 ish i believe is when they finally settled down and made their home in nantes that really does suck trying to immigrate because yeah it is super expensive to move well it's so expensive especially especially move to another country so yeah. that would that would be a huge disappointment if you well, especially the u.s especially the u.s it's, yeah the u.s it's is kind of a it's a to. process it's mm-hmm. a huge process to become a citizen as early as 2002 agnes was quoted as saying Xavier was too judgmental, too quick to argue, too rigid, too military. There's no more tenderness between us, no more attention, no softness, no sex. When I ask him if he's happy, his response is the same. Yes, I am, but if we could all die tomorrow, that would be better. Probably not a quote you want to hear from your husband. No, I, I also would... I'm not victim blaming, but I wouldn't stay. Yeah, that's I'd leave. That's um that's no good. So in 2005, their problems seemingly got worse because Agnes filed a police report against Xavier for assaulting Arthur. So this was her son that um Xavier adopted. I didn't find anything on that. I just happened to find this little excerpt about this. Mm. So their financial problems continued after this because despite Xavier's aristocratic background, he never had a steady job. So basically what he was doing, he was kind of trying to be, I mean, I don't know if you'd want to call it an entrepreneur, but he just ended up having a string of failed businesses. So in, on the outside, it looked like, oh, he's doing all of these great things. He's starting these businesses. None of them actually took off. So for the most part, they relied on money that Agnes had inherited. So I don't think she actually came from the true aristocratic background that Xavier came from, but her family had had some money as well. Mm -hmm. So by 2011, that money was on the verge of running out. Arthur was enrolled in a private Catholic college near home. Thomas was enrolled at a college studying music. And modeled part-time for a mail order catalog while also going to a private Catholic school, La Perviere, with the youngest child, Benoit. And it sounded like Benoit. Oh, wait, so wait, college? Like, so they were older now? No, no, just Arthur and Thomas was in college. Oh, okay. So they're they're adults. In 2011. So 2011, Arthur was 20, I believe. Thomas was 18, Anne was 16, and Benoit was 14. Oh, okay. Okay. So, like I said, Arthur and Anne, or I'm sorry, Arthur and Thomas was in college. Thomas was studying music. I don't remember what Arthur was studying, but honestly, it, it struck me as, oh, wow, he was pretty smart you know, something that I couldn't do. (laughs) Right. And like I said, Anne and Benoit, they were both in a private Catholic school, La Perviere, Pervery, I think actually is how it's pronounced. And like I said, Anne has, was modeling part-time for a mail order catalog. 
Uh, Benoit was actually kind of taken after his older brother, Thomas, because he was just as obsessed with music as Thomas was, it seemed. Mm -hmm. So Agnes worked as an assistant in a Catholic Catholic school. It wasn't her kids' school. It was a different one, but that's where she had worked. So by all accounts, the family was happy and well-to-do, and they definitely kept that appearance on the outside. So they kind of wear your stereotypical Facebook family as in, oh, we're having so much fun. We love each other so much. It's everything's going great. We yeah, did we're, this. We're such a perfect family, but perfect really family, not. but at home, not so much mm-hmm. because Xavier was so very concerned about public appearance. They found themselves in an increasing amount of debt. Xavier even had a mistress in Paris who he supposedly borrowed 50,000 euros from because he was so desperate for money. So he was definitely keeping up that appearance. And honestly, by all accounts, he was a very loving father. And I mean, I saw, I have some pictures that I'm going to be posting. A happy family, it seems, on the outside. So in January 2011, Xavier's father died, which now gave Xavier the title of count. Because remember, he had that um, old French nobility in in his background so he is now a count i'm sorry but if i got the term count i understand i'm a woman so i'd be countess but if i had count or countess in front of my name i would be so pretentious (laughs) i I would be so happy (laughs) and just like just like kiss my rings peasants Which is why you are not a count. <laughs> exactly. Which is why I'm just has nothing to do with our background, but that's why. no. Yeah. Obviously. <laughs> you're, you're like this because you're an asshole. <laughs> right. Yeah. So it was when Xavier was going through his father's belongings and finances that he realized that his father was also suffering from financial problems and was near poverty. So very little little was left to Xavier upon his death so basically like his parents were doing the same shit well his mom was already gone it's nothing is actually his his dad was yeah his dad um was basically living in an apartment and didn't have much and obviously Zavi didn't know because his dad was keeping up the same kind of thing yeah parents please talk to your children about things (laughs) yeah don't it's just it's finances just a little obviously not your little children but as your kids get older it's just nice for the kids to know <laughs> so one don't, of the, su- don't surprise them when you die <laughs> <laughs> right so one of the things that Xavier had inherited was his father's 22 long rifle so even though Xavier never had any interest in guns he ended up getting his gun license in February so again his father passed away in January uh, he in February he got his gun license and he frequented the shooting range and he would sometimes bring his the boys with him. So he even started asking the instructor questions, including questions about a silencer. So if this wasn't weird enough for you, in March he bought a silencer for the rifle, among other things. Question. Yes. Are silencers legal to have on your uh, personal? like weapons in in europe or france i am not sure that's a good question is that is that even legal here i don't know if they are well i don't think so ish i'm not sure i'm not a weapons expert yeah i'm not either but in my opinion if you feel that you need a silencer you're up to some you know shady shit so i would be concerned yep so um among the other things that he bought bought wow among the other things that he bought with the silencer was cement chalk lime bullets cleaning supplies garbage bags a spade and a trolley yeah you're making a kill room now this was not all bought together but throughout the month month of march so witnesses say that the family seemed like they were preparing for a big move and they had seen Xavier loading up things in his car. So he had also paid up some of the debts, like the final bill for all of his kids' schools, 
and then closed all of their bank accounts. The lease on their home was terminated and there was a note put on the mailbox that said, please return all mail to sender. Thank you. Interesting. Yeah. On April 1st, Arthur didn't show up to work to pick up his paycheck, which was really strange. He was pretty, you know, adamant about picking up his paycheck when it came out. Legal and unregulated, free to buy over the counter in France. Silencers. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, okay. Still shady. <laughs> <laughs> so on April 1st, he, Arthur didn't show up to pick his paycheck. Two days later, on Sunday the 3rd, the family was seen having a dinner at a restaurant. The next day, Anne and Benoit didn't show up to school due to a supposed illness. Thomas had ended up going back to school after the dinner, so he actually went back to school on Sunday. Um, But Xavier called him on Tuesday to come home because he said that his mother had been in an accident. And I also read somewhere that he told us, it was told Thomas that it was a bike accident and she's in a coma or something i'm not sure okay but um he so thomas had texted a friend of his on tuesday night the friend replied but thomas never answered that text on april 11th Anne and benoit's school received a letter from xavier saying that he was pulling them from school because they were moving to australia for xavier's job Agnes's job got a note saying that she was immediately resigning because of the move, but her boss wasn't able to reach her to ask about the abrupt resignation. So also on this day, Xavier and Agnes's relatives received a typed four to eight page letter. I I read a couple of different accounts saying it was four pages and some others said eight pages. Either way, it was a long typed letter. It wasn't actually signed by hand. But it said it was from the whole family, and but it also had multiple grammatical errors, which wasn't like any of them. So it had said that Xavier had been a covert agent of the DEA, and as in like the American DEA, and the family was being moved to America into witness protection, so they wouldn't be able to be contacted or access social media. No. Yeah. No. Mm-hmm. It just keeps getting weirder, though. So it also left instructions on what to do with the remainder of their possessions and that Xavier's car had been given to a family friend, but they later found that that wasn't the case about the car Mm. because the um, Agnes's car. And I believe either Thomas's or um, Arthur's car was still at the house. It was just Xavier's car that was gone, which is why it said the letter said that it was given to a family friend that okay i i'm still thinking i when you first told me about this i thought they were children Mm -mm, nope i know it's crazy that they're adults okay keep going yep i'm still wrapping my mind around that like oh i did that's a little detail i just didn't realize i guess yeah so the most unusual thing about the letter though was it that it had told the family to stay away from the back terrace and to keep telling people that they all moved to Australia for a Xavier's job. It's a weird little detail, the back terrace. It is a weird little detail. Mm-hmm. Which will come kind of into play. Obviously, it's going to come into play. But that little detail, it just... I'll, I'll tell you when we get to it. Yeah. So on April 13th, a neighbor had asked the police to do a wellness check because the house had been shut up, all the shutters were closed, all the vehicles were still there other than Xavier's, and they hadn't heard anything coming from the house, even though it was a family of six with two dogs. They were Mm -hmm. labs, so it's not like they were little yipping dogs. They were full-grown labs. So this was two days after the letters was sent to the schools and the families. And in that episode of um, Unsolved Mysteries, the neighbor was talking and she said that this was extremely unusual. First of all, again, it's a family of six. If you don't hear anything coming from the apartment, I mean, it's an apartment. It's not like it's a house separated by a yard. They didn't hear anything. And she said the shutters were never closed and all of the shutters were closed on the house. She said, even when they went on vacations, 
Wait, it was an apartment? It was an apartment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With a back terrace? I'm sorry. I mean, I've never been to France, so I don't really know exactly how more like architecture. Oh, more like, like a townhouse, townhouse type oh, okay. style. So that either way, sense. it's connected to the neighbor's house. Okay. So again, no matter what, it's very strange that you're not hearing anything. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. And like was I that, said, because I was kind of confused about the architecture. Go ahead. Uh, like I said, the shutters, the neighbor said the shutters are never closed. So this was Man. very strange to her. When the police arrived, they ended up having to get a locksmith to open the door because the door was locked but they didn't find anything amiss other than the beds had been stripped completely so they had suspected that the family had left voluntarily agnes kept i'm sorry agnes's family kept insisting that something wasn't right and that she wouldn't have left like this without telling them anything other than what was in the the letters that they received so the police went back to the house on the 15th so two days later but again, didn't notice anything screwy other than some pictures were missing from frames. So the only things that the police have really noticed, because the house was clean, it was like spotless. The beds were stripped and pictures were missing. That was it. So Agnes's family kept insisting that the police kept in, keep investigating. So they ended up going back to the house another four times, four different times. And this was on the 18th, 19th, 20th, and then finally on the 21st. So the police went to the house six different times before they found anything. That's just crazy to me. Yeah. So finally on the 21st, one of the officers went to the back of the house, which again, the strange letters, when I said the, t- the whole back terrace thing, when he said, don't go to the back terrace, why didn't you go to the back terrace? You know, I know. what I mean? Like, just take a peek. Yeah. So on the 21st, one of the officers went to the back of the house and they looked under the terrace. For some reason, something wasn't right. So when they dug it up, they found the bodies of Agnes, Arthur, Anne, and Benoit in one grave and then a separate grave where just Thomas was buried. They also found their two labs had also been killed and buried with the family. That pisses me off more than anything. I I know it just, that just hurts. I mean, it's awful, awful that this whole family was just killed, but then they got to add the dogs in there too. I know. Why got to kill the dogs? That's just like a kick in the crotch when you're down. You know what I mean? I know. So all of the bodies had been wrapped in blankets and then wrapped in plastic bags and taped up. And then they were buried with small religious icons. Like there had been some kind of religious ceremony. You know, because the the family was very Catholic and they kept up their Catholic ways. So this led the investigators to believe that there was some type of emotional attachment between the killer and the family. So the autopsies revealed that Agnes, Arthur, Anne, and Benoit were likely killed the night of the third after that dinner that they were seen at. And then Thomas, who left that night, he didn't stay home. He went back to school He was then killed on the 5th, that Tuesday, and obviously he had texted his friend, his friend texted him back, he didn't answer, that's because he had already been killed at that point, which is so sad. Yeah, and it also does kind of explain why he was in a separate place than the rest of the family. And and I also have, there's also another thought on that as well, which I'll get into a little bit later. Okay. So it was real revealed that all of the children had been drugged with sleeping pills and then shot twice in the back of the head with a 22 rifle. Agnes had also been shot twice in the back of the head with the same type of gun, but she actually didn't have any drugs in her system. So she ended up having to sleep with a CPAP machine. And for anybody that doesn't know what that is, it's it's something basically to help you breathe in during the night so anybody with any kind of sleeping issues it's for sleep apnea basically yeah Yeah. so if you end up not breathing in the middle of the night it's it's basically forcing air down your throat so so she slept with the CPAP machine and the investigator saw that it had been shut off at 3 a.m so this must be a fancy CPAP machine showing what time it gets shut off and stuff 
I mean, I don't have one, so I mean, I don't know. For I, sure. I don't know how they work. Yeah. Who I'm going to assume it's a fancy one. I mean, Xavier liked to spend money, so. Yeah. So since they saw that it was shut off at 3 a.m., they thought that she was likely killed in her sleep and was the first to die. So they're thinking that killer went in, shot Agnes, turned off the CPAP machine, had the sign, you know, well, at the time, they're not really sure about who it was, but they're thinking Agnes was killed first. Then the killer went to the, um, to the children and shot each of them because, well, they had sleeping pills in their system. So they wouldn't have probably wouldn't have woke up. So after the discovery of the bodies, the police searched the house again, but found no trace of blood, no DNA, no fingerprints and no incriminating evidence. The house was spotless which is crazy because there yeah. were five murders not including the dogs five murders in this house and there was not a drop of blood anywhere he was thorough so thorough yeah i mean like i mean, I, I i am a mad cleaner but that's that's a whole other thing that is a taking it to a whole other level that's like premeditation that oh is yeah that to takes the a, max. that takes a lot of thought yeah i mean that's definitely why the the beds were stripped because if they're thinking they were killed in their beds i mean that's just crazy that there was nothing in that house at all so the only thing that was missing was xavier and then he immediately was the number one suspect but had a three-week head start yep because again they weren't found until the 21st. They were likely killed on the 3rd and the 5th. So he had a good head start. He made no attempt whatsoever to cover his tracks. None. So as soon as they were like, no, we got to find this guy, they immediately started looking up cell phone records. They looked up credit cards, the whole nine, because again, he closed all of his bank accounts, so we just had credit cards. And boy, was he spending. So they ended up finding out that he ended up staying at the house for a full week after the murders. Because there's eyewitness accounts showing him packing stuff in his car, taking out the trash. I mean, people saw him at the house. Yeah. <sighs> Which, oh, that pisses me off mm -hmm. so on april 8th he had made some posts online and sent some emails to family and friends he left the house on the 11th and his picture was taken on a speed trap so they confirmed that the 11th is when he officially left his house police were able to check his credit card purchases along his path he seemed to be heading in a southwest direction hitting a lot of the cities where he had been the happiest with his family that they kind of noticed. Because if you remember, they kind of traveled around through the night throughout the nineties until they officially settled down in Nantes. So they were able to see some of his purchases were at some hotels, restaurants, and gas stations. So he was not hiding at all. Mm -mm. And I believe he used his name at some of the hotels, if I'm not mistaken. So the police were under the assumption that this was basically kind of a farewell trip, visiting the places where he was happiest, and then it would end in suicide. So that's what the police were thinking. So on April 22nd, just a day after the bodies were discovered, his car was found abandoned in the parking lot of the Hotel Formule 1 in Roquebrune sur Argens. When checking security footage, they got him checking out of the hotel on the 15th, abandoning his car and leaving on foot with only his bag and what looked like something long and slender. So they got that on one of the security cameras in the parking lot. So watching that episode, what they said was, it was one of the investigators, I think. They said they got him walking out of the hotel. He did something with the car and then turn around and walked out 
of the parking lot and then just kept walking until they couldn't see him in the camera anymore. And he said, and he definitely, he wasn't hiding. It's not that he like looked at the camera and was like, <laughs> no, he just was real nonchalant and just walked out of the parking lot. So this confirmed to police at the time, again, this is just a day after the bodies were found when they found his car. So at the time, the police were thinking that he succeeded with suicide because this hotel was surrounded by cliffs and mountains. So heavy ve vegetation, like it was going to be hard to find. But then why would he take a bag? Well, they, they thought the long and slender thing that he was carrying, where they were assuming was the gun. Was the gun, yeah. So they were like, oh, he's going out to the woods to commit suicide. But they searched for weeks for his body and the surrounding mountains and, and all the, you know, woods and everything, but nothing turned up. They, I mean, they I'm talking helicopters, lots of bodies on the ground searching, you name it. They had it out there searching for a body. Yeah, so basically. it was like, it was like a full on manhunt. Oh yeah. At this point. Yeah. Oh yeah. Nothing turned up. They did not succeed in finding anything. So the investigators now either believe that he succeeded with suicide or that this was all just a giant ploy to give him time to escape and start a new life on the run. So this is, again, this is super interesting. This is just kind of a side note here. The police discovered an email that he had sent to his mistress in 2010 stating that he was, quote, this is quite a long quote, ruined at rock bottom like never before. I am awake almost every night with these morbid ideas, burning down the house after giving everyone sleeping pills or killing myself so that Agnes gets the 600,000 euros. In any case, my life will end in the next few months if I don't get 25,000 euros immediately. Most of the time, I'm not in a dream, but in a nightmare, and I can't escape except of course by doing something radical and final and that was in 2010 that he wrote that oh yeah so he was thinking about it for a very long time i mean he's it's, it says in here he giving everyone sleeping pills and burning down the house while he didn't burn down the house his kids all had sleeping pills in their system i mean mm -hmm. if that's not damning enough i don't know I don't what it is. is yeah so there are still some people, family and friends of his, who believe that he definitely didn't do this. One of the arguments, I know, one of the arguments is that he had had a bad back and always complained of back pain. So where the bodies were found was basically like under a porch. So they say that he would not have been able to dig a hole and bury the entire family under there. So that's one of their arguments. There they are also, ways around that. Mm -hmm. Well, because because here's the thing. If you got enough adrenaline running through you, you can do yeah. just about anything. That's like mom under, like mom with kids stuck under the car strength right there. Oh, yeah. 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 So they also say that he was a very loving, present father who adored his kids and was very much a family man. So they just couldn't believe that he would be able to do anything like this. That makes my skin crawl. The thing is, money makes people do weird things. Mm -hmm. Very weird things. And money can turn people into monsters. Absolute. Yeah. Yeah. If you took yeah. the right in my mouth. Monsters. But, but also, too, the thing is, he was a very materialistic and very prideful so, I mean, he was very proud of his aristocratic background and he definitely wanted to keep that up, that public appearance. So when that was about to run down the drain, plus the money issues, I mean, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm snaps. sorry. Like someone that is very reliant on that sort of like lifestyle with the money and everything like they'll do they'll do some crazy shit to keep it 
Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. killing their whole family. But, you know. Yeah. So, one of the many questions in this case, clearly there's so many questions. Yeah. But one of the many questions of this case was, why was Thomas killed and buried separately? Remember. Did you hear my cat? Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's it's back fine. again. So, remember... Xavier was very proud of his nobility and everything that went with it. I mean, literally everything that went with it. So it's thought that he had hesitated in killing Thomas because Thomas was his firstborn son, even though he adopted Arthur, Thomas was his firstborn son and he would have been the one to carry on the last name and the legacy of nobility. So investigators think that that's maybe why he had hesitated and like let Arthur go back to school after that dinner and then you know took a couple days to be like should I do this should I not you know after he had already killed the rest of his family and then decided he's got to go and that's when he they called he called Thomas back home so the the other reason why obviously and it's such a selfish reason to uh, keep to keep your child alive, to keep yourself from killing your child is this one will carry on the family name though. Mm-hmm. That is so disgusting. Mm-hmm. Yep. So gross. So the other thing that the ops, obviously the investigators and stuff, they were thinking that he was committing suicide is because I mean, 98% of family massacres end with suicide. So whether it be the father or the mother, I mean, or even a child, mostly it's the father. Um, If they're quote unquote, the family massacre, if they're killing the whole family, they end up killing themselves as well or death by police. One of the, one of the two basically. So that's kind of why they initially thought that, but there is an international warrant out for Xavier Dupont de Lyonnais, and to this day, he has not been found, which is nuts. Bananas. I mean, this, let's be real though. He's a smart man. This, I know. Whole, it's first, it's first of all, you don't want to give him, scene. yeah, you don't want to give him credit at all, but this was planned down to every last yes. detail every like, detail was he, planned he definitely has that um I, I don't know him personally so i i don't know if he is but that's like type a personality kind of stuff that type I mean, a that planner that that yeah, kind of thing yeah yeah because i mean because the thing is he had the silencer so which is why none of his neighbors heard gunshots yeah and here's here's another thing though like I understand where the police are coming from expecting that he might he might com- complete suicide or commit suicide however you feel comfortable saying it mm-hmm. um because that's typically how the normal pattern ends mm-hmm. but him prepping like he did yeah I fully I have no doubt in my mind that he never thought of killing himself no Mm-mm. he always had the plan of getting away yep because like, you know you can't never just... once in his mind i don't think that, i don't think that ever crossed his mind i think he can't... i think he took the gun for protection well and so they won't have a murder weapon because oh, again yeah, they don't too. have a murder weapon at all that too because you know you can't just leave your family if you're not happy no you have to kill them all to be able to leave what is the logic in that? I know. And I I have to like read into it a little bit more. Like the parents, mother or father, especially a mother though, the parent that kills their children, that is a psychology that I almost don't even want to understand. Yeah. It's unreal. It's, It's fascinating. Like I said, especially a mother, Mm -hmm. like that baby came from you. And the idea of, of a mother killing their children is disgusting, Mm -hmm. but like, 
like Chris Watts, for example. That's mm -hmm. that's a very, very recent example of that. It's like, why? And they if, were if, babies. Yeah, in his case. In Chris Watts' case, his children were literal babies. But, it, oh, and his wife is pregnant. But that yeah. may be something that we'll cover in the future. <laughs> well, but, yeah. yeah, so it's just... I, I I don't understand that. I don't. It's baffling. It is. Especially if you truly like all it all into the purpose of if you love your children. Uh-huh. And and they said, and people say he was a very present father. So yeah. I mean he was in everything they did, very loving family man. I'm I've seen some pic I saw some pictures of the four kids all like screwing around. Like Arthur was like laying over the other three and they're all making faces and stuff. So I mean it it's it seemed like a very I mean it's it's so sad, but it seemed like a very happy family. But clearly in the early two thousands, that's when shit started to go sideways. Yeah. But I mean the dude bought the cement, the chalk lime, the garbage bags, the cleaning supplies. He had all of that, which was all used in the burial site. Mm -hmm. It was, I mean, the dude did it. Let's be real. But I fully, I fully think, I think he's on the run. I really do. Oh, because yeah. That amount of the crime scene, how there was nothing that they could find, first of all the letters that were written and sent they were even keeping up the pretense like before they even had sent the letters before all of this happened I did read that they were starting to say something about moving to Australia so before all of this happened they were talking about moving to Australia I so, can I can almost guarantee that he's in a new country with a new mm -hmm. identity and living mm -hmm. his living his best life mm -hmm. starting his new life but i highly recommend you watch that episode if yeah I, I if you want to look it. at this i mean i highly recommend watching that episode on unsolved mysteries which first of all the new unsolved mysteries on netflix super cool very interesting and this one like i said this is on there and i pretty much covered everything that's in that but you'll actually get to hear them say things correctly <laughs> Cause you know, it's all in French. So if you're okay with reading subtitles, definitely watch it because I mean, it's one of his friends is actually interviewed as well, who he didn't think that he'd be able to do this at first, but then after seeing everything, he never actually says, yeah, I think he did it, but he kind of comes off with like, you know, how could you do this to your family type of thing? We grew up together. It's kind of it's kind of that thing that this is someone that I love, and it's hard for me to admit to myself mm -hmm. that they could have done this horrific thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's so. super interesting, but it's and it's just outraged that that this he was never found. I mean, I know he was visiting some of the places that he was fa happy with his family in the nineties, and then just left his car and took off just took off that is so nuts yeah <laughs> i hate unsolved stuff <laughs> i know <laughs> but one of these days we'll you, have a solved one <laughs> i know it leaves you with such like a like like you you go to take a breath and you can't ever exhale i, know. I hate it i, hate I know it so and much. this this poor family was just snuffed out in one evening. It was, it's just awful. I know. Just awful. For and like, I, like I said, when you, when you initially told me about this story, I thought, I thought the, the kids were actually children. So it, it is amazing that they were all adults, but I do think he's, he's obviously a fucking coward. Yeah. <sighs> They were all in from all accounts that I saw. They were all very intelligent. They could have gone somewhere. I mean, Thomas and Benoit were both very into music. Benoit was only 14. Mm -hmm. They were both very into music. Anne was modeling on the side and made fantastic grades. 
Arthur was, like I said, I don't remember exactly what he was going into, but it was something like he was a very smart boy and he was 20, 20 years old, just getting started. And I mean, it's just awful. Absolutely awful. Yeah. So if anybody right. ever has any information on Xavier, Xavier Dupont de Lyonnais, contact the freaking police the police <laughs> and get him where he needs to be behind bars do you have a do you have a picture of him that you're, we're gonna share i yes absolutely when That's this awesome. airs the day this airs i will be posting some pictures of the family uh, i have some picked out that i'm gonna be posting so yeah hopefully. let's keep a let's keep a lookout for this asshole so we can get that family yeah. justice yeah well and the bad thing is and and the investigators have said this too. He could fit in anywhere. So yes, he's he's, he's that. Does he have that kind of like Ted Bundy esque? I can change my looks quite easily. Yes, because there's mm. some pictures of him bald, and he's he's got very dark features. So he's he's got dark hair, dark eyebrows. He wears glasses, but I mean he's he can kind of fit in anywhere if he, if he could go to greece he can kind of fit into that if he's he a goes, chameleon it, you know to spain he can kind of fit in there it's not that he's dark skinned um but i mean enough to where he can pretty much fit in anywhere he's it's, there's nothing he's a good looking guy but there's nothing extraordinary about him to stand out in the crowd like ted bundy like ted bundy <laughs> my goodness yeah <sighs> well that was this week's episode of 2k away <laughs> and again eventually i'm really hoping to get you some solved things <laughs> yeah let's let's do a let's do a solve case next maybe <laughs> yeah, i'll maybe i'll bring a solve case so we can have a little <laughs> bit of a nicely wrapped bow yeah at the end of an episode yeah um well thank you for joining us um, if you want to stay up, stay, uh, ugh, good God. If you want to stay updated uh, with the podcast, feel free to follow us on Facebook at 2K Away and on Instagram at 2K Away Podcast. We also have a YouTube channel. It is uh, 2K Away Podcast where you can listen to the audio and sometimes visuals. <laughs> we'll see. But. We love you and we will see you all next week. And thank you so much for keeping us afloat. Yes. Thank you all for listening and your constant support. Thank you. All right. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Okay. So I guess I'll tell the story of me waking up for anesthesia. Anybody that, that yeah, anybody that um, knows me knows that I am an asshole when I wake up from an from any anesthetic. I've had a few surgeries in my in my day and um when I wake up I am not so, nice. So rude. Yes. So they put me under and it was really quick. My roommate actually drove me to the dentist and they like sat me in the chair. They stuck my arm right away. They went over the instructions. Da 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 da. da. Do you understand? I'm like yes oh so they said okay you're gonna start to feel a little drowsy the next thing i remember i realized that time had passed <laughs> i didn't know how much time but the next thing i remember is i had something black and plastic in my mouth and i was sitting there comatose <laughs> and then i started having these like weird fever dreams and i don't remember what any of them were but that's what they felt like to me so then I start coming to, I'm being wheeled down this hallway and I get put in this room. So then I really start coming to, and I realize that I'm in a room full of folded up wheelchairs. <laughs> I think they had me in a room in the back, like by the back door, <laughs> just so they could like get rid of me quickly or something. I don't know. Probably. So... I woke up and I'm like looking around this room and I'm, you know, mouthful of cotton. I'm like, I'm like looking around like, ah. <laughs> like, so 
then I realized that I'm in a wheelchair and I'm like, well, I don't know why I'm in this room. So I'm going to leave in my head. So I like, I put my feet down on the ground. And I'm so I'm like, <laughs> for those that aren't seeing this, she's got her hands up and like moving slowly. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like trying to imitate my feet. Cause I, I'm like, I'm like taking real tiny, like tiny, like old lady steps. Like Slow if you, steps. If you see an old lady in a nursing home in a wheelchair, those are the steps I'm taking. So then the nurse realizes that I'm trying to make a run for it. So then she, <laughs> a very slow run for it. So then she comes back in. <laughs> so she comes back in and she catches me because I've gone so far. And she's like, no, 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 no. And then she starts wheeling me and then she wheels me out the back. She had they had my roommate pick me up in the back alley behind the dentist office like a seedy drug deal yeah and i and i and before but before we moved out there when she came back and caught me from my escape i asked her because i forgot to ask before i went under anesthetic i said hey can i have my teeth but of course (laughs) i had i had a bunch of cotton in my mouth so I was like hey can I have my teeth and she she just goes no you can't and I got pissed because I was just like but they're my teeth (laughs) because of course you would ask for your teeth yes (laughs) I wanted my teeth (laughs) I wanted to see him I don't understand how that's so (laughs) I don't understand how that request couldn't be fulfilled but whatever Um, but she told me no and I'm so mad because like they're my teeth why can't I have my teeth (laughs) so he wheels me out the back like we're getting ready to do a drug deal so she puts me in the car I don't remember the trip from the wheelchair to the car (laughs) Um, so we took my car and and my roommate is driving so she tells my roommate a bunch of stuff. I don't really remember what she told my roommate. Um, but I remember her face being like real close to mine. <laughs> so I don't know if it was me that did that or if it was her. <laughs> 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 so I don't, I also don't remember. Did I call you or? Yeah, you FaceTimed me. Okay. So you I FaceTimed thought, me. Yeah. I thought Jelly was already on the phone with you or something. I don't remember. So. Nope. We're going down this alley because it was behind the dentist's office. (laughs) And the first turn that you would take to go back on a main road, my roommate didn't take. And I go, why are we still in the alley? (laughs) And she's like, she's like, cause it's quicker. I don't, I didn't under, I still don't understand the logic, but whatever. Um, She's like, cause it's quicker. And I go, and I get all mad because I'm like, so mad. I was like, this is how you get nails in your tires. <laughs> and she goes, she goes, I go down alleys all the time, which she got a nail in her tire <laughs> not very long ago and had to get a patch. So I, <laughs> I go, this is why you got a nail in your tire. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> of course, I'm, again, I've caught my mouth. So I'm like, this is why. You got a nail in your tire. <laughs> he goes, she goes, I got the nail in my tire in downtown LA. And I just go. Oh. <laughs> there was some major eye rolling. There going was, up. there was. And I did a bunch of like the hand up kind of motion. Uh-huh. Yeah. I was, yeah. Like, I was like, you were not I was like, nice. idiot. Was I on the phone with you during that? Yes. Oh, I don't remember. You I being, know. I don't remember you being in the car for that. <laughs> I was, in fact, on FaceTime. Uh, yes. <laughs> got to see all that. And then she goes, she goes, she's being a bitch. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, that's what she does when she is out of it. Because <laughs> I don't like feeling like that. <laughs> it makes my head feel funny. <laughs> um, but things are better. Um, not really. But... <laughs> I'm healing in my own unique way of 
healing. 